Hello everybody, welcome back to my next video. So one of my new subscribers asked me to walk you guys through one of my favorite, I think she said vegan dishes. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing today. As a matter of fact, I'm not just gonna do one, I'm gonna do three dishes at the same time. So it's gonna be kind of interesting, hopefully. Uh, so a couple weeks ago, I subscribed to a blog called Sweet Potato Soul. And it's a black lady who just does all kinds of recipes and meal plans and, I, and you know, just ideas about vegan diets. And I subscribe to her. She sends me content in my email. By the way, if you're interested in that topic, she'd be a good one to follow. Anyway, at the end of last week, she sent a something that she calls, what she call it? A cheap vegan meal plan on $30 a week. And of course, that got my attention. Not so much at the price, but just vegan meal plan. And I needed some content for today. But I did want to give her a shout out. I think her name is Janae. And again, her blog is called Sweet Potato Soul. All these recipes are hers. If I can remember, I will put the link to her blog in the description after I finish the video. So anyway, the dishes that we'll be doing today are called, well, first of all, I'll tell you about the meal plan. So she has like six different recipes that she included. One of them is uh, something for breakfast each day. And then the other meals, you're supposed to kind of mix them up throughout the week and you have something for lunch and something for dinner. Well, today I'm not going to make all of the dishes that she uh, recommended in this particular meal plan. I'm just going to make three of them. I can't really say that the items would necessarily cost $30. I know a lot of times you buy an item and you don't use all of it. So if you kind of broke it down into servings, I guess these items could be purchased for $30. A lot of the ingredients I already had. So I just had to go buy the things that I did not have. Anyway, the first dish is going to be called sweet potato and uh, sweet potato and tofu curry, which sounds really good. Then there's a lentil sweet potato chili that is served over rice. And actually, the, the curry is served over rice, too. And then the roast beet and carrot salad sounds really good. And we're actually going to make our own dressing for it. So I'm looking forward to it. My recipes are already printed out on paper. I usually use magnets to attach recipes to my microwave above my stove so I can look at it while I'm cooking. So you may see me turning around and looking at my paper while I'm going along. The first thing I need to do actually is for the roast beet and carrot salad because it involves roasted beets and carrots and I want to get them in the oven. So I already have my oven preheating to 350. I will put either I'll put links to her recipes on her website or I'll just put the ingredients and the instructions in the description after I'm done. But it says that I need to have one bunch of carrots with the leaves intact. So we're not talking about the carrots that come in the plastic bags. We're talking about carrots that already, I mean, that are still kind of look like they do when they grow out of the ground with the stems attached. They, the recipe requires the, uh, well, the recipe calls for the leaves. My store decided that we don't need the leaves and kind of hacked them all off. But what I'm gonna do is substitute the leaves off of the beets, which the recipe also calls for, I'm going to use some of those for my recipe. <laughs> One thing about me, I'll say this right now. I usually don't cook specifically for recipes. I have enough experience cooking where if I'm trying to cook a new dish, I will just pull up two or three recipes for it on the internet. I'll read through them and I'll get a gist of what, what's supposed to be done. And then I will wing it and put it together the way I want to. I may substitute some stuff. That just comes with experience, knowing what can be done, what won't be done. So... My recipes, um, my, what is it I'm going to be making with these carrots? It's called a carrot top gremolata. So I guess it's something that I'm going to be putting on top of this salad. Anyway, it's going to taste a little different than sweet potato soles because she said use carrot leaves. And I'm going to be using beet leaves and whatever few little leaves I can harvest here very quickly. But I'm going to go ahead and get these washed. I did a lot of prep work before I even started the video because I knew, you know, you don't need me to show you how to chop onions if you know how to do any kind of cooking. Some of the stuff that I needed to do to cook these meals, I didn't need to show you. So my things like onions, they're already cut up. There's some garlic that I already had to mince and chop up. It's already done. Brown rice is involved. It just finished in the rice cooker. 
and and I'll talk about well maybe I'll talk about it right now while we're waiting on me to finish washing these carrots I love my rice cooker back in the day before I had a rice cooker I didn't know anything about them and I would cook rice on the stove and you know you have varying degrees of success when you're cooking rice on the stove at least I did sometimes it would stick Sometimes it, you know, sometimes it wouldn't be, it would be hard, crunchy. You know how rice can do if you don't know what you're doing in a regular pot. Once I discovered rice cookers, I will never go back. Rice cookers, you put, they tell you how much rice, how much water, you put it in there, and you walk away. You turn it on, you walk away. And when you come back, the rice is always, always perfect. So if you don't have a rice cooker and you use a lot of rice, it is a good investment. And they're not really expensive. Obviously, the bigger, you know, volume size one that you get is going to cost more. But in general, they are not one of the most expensive household appliances that they have. So that's just a little tip out there. Get you a rice cooker, even if it only holds three or four cups. My rice cooker, I think, can prepare six or eight cups. I've never pushed it all the way to capacity because there's just not enough of a need for rice. Usually when I cook two cups of rice in there, it's enough for more than, you know, a nice small group of people. So right now I'm tearing off a little bit of leaves that my produce department left me at the store. I wish they left them intact. I think sometimes it depends on which produce guy you get, whether or not they leave the leaves on the outside of the cabbage and some of the other green parts. Some of them feel like it looks better when you tear them off. But if you're like me, and, and I learned this from my mother, she likes the leaves that are on the outside of like cabbage. I mean, they kind of taste like collard greens a little bit. They're very tough and I think they're very good, you know, um, prepared by themselves or inside with the rest of the cabbage. But some produce guys tear them off and throw them away. So I know my mother told me about a time, or it may have, I'm sure it happened more than one time, that she um, was at the store when she caught the produce guy throwing away the leaves on the outside of the greens or something. And she asked, can I have them? And he gave them to her for free. He didn't sell it to her by the pound. He thought it was garbage. So he said, you can have it. So you have to be mindful of that kind of stuff. If you tell your produce department how you want them to treat the, the items, like if you want them to save something for you, a lot of times they'll do it. So get to know your produce people and they might hook you up with some things that they are currently throwing away. So, having done that, I've already washed my beets. Beets, I love. I never had used fresh beets like this. I never had really even eaten fresh beets until I started juicing, I guess last year, whenever I bought my juicer and it called for fresh beets. And I love them. Beet juice is an excellent, um, it's an excellent source of a lot of vitamins. I won't pretend like I know all of them, but I know that beets are good source of iron and if you um they say it's the closest in consistency to human blood so if you if a person is wanting to build up their blood you know the quality of their blood or the health of their blood beet juice often will get you together so i love beets usually in juices they recommend that you get rid of the stems because it can give it kind of an earthy taste I did not know that when I started <laughs> when I started juicing. So I was eating the stems, the leaves, and everything, and shoving them right through the juicer. You feel me? But you know, and it didn't bother me. You know, I but I like vegetables. I was raised eating vegetables. The taste of fresh stuff does not bother me. The taste of green stuff does not bother me. So, where some people are off put by the taste of certain things, I don't mind it. So I've got everything washed up now, and. She's calling for the three small beets to be cubed up. Now, obviously, I do not have one of those fancy setups where the camera's overhead and I can show the people what I'm doing. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be making do using my um, using my laptop and just moving it around. You know, you, we're all at home. So um, what I will do, I know that the another thing that's called for in the roast beet and carrot salad uh, is a cup of cooked pearl barley or another whole grain. I'm using pearl barley. And so I've already measured out a cup of my pearl barley and I have a pot here. My particular brand of pearl barley calls for two and a half cups of water for every and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt 
for every cup of barley. So I'm gonna measure out my two and a half cups of water and I'm just gonna do a pinch of salt. I usually don't measure everything. There are certain things that I measure and certain things that I just kind of get a feel for it. Or as Tabitha Brown, my favorite uh, vegan blogger, it says she cooks from the spirit. And I guess I cook from the spirit too because I don't measure everything. Some things I do, but you know, something like a pinch of salt, I don't need to, or an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, I don't need to measure that. So uh, I am a clean as you go type. So let me put my measuring cup away. Give me a little salt. I use pink Himalayan salt. I'll just show you that. That's what, that's the kind of salt, well, let's see. That's the kind of salt I use. It doesn't really matter on the brand, I guess. But it's pink Himalayan salt. Supposed to be better for you. Um, I don't know if it is or not. But I am starting my pot of water that's going to cook my pearl barley here in a minute. But I have to wait for it to come to a boil before I add the barley. So now we're done with that. Oh, well, now we're got that going. I will also, I'm going to, I told you I'm cooking three things at one time. So I'm going to jump over to my sweet potato and tofu curry dish. And it calls for a block of extra firm tofu that is cubed. The reason I am gonna jump over to that now is because I've learned that you have to prepare tofu before you use it. Tofu absorbs the taste of whatever it is that you want it to taste like. You know, you, whatever you cook it in, that's what it tastes like. Otherwise, it's very bland. But first, you have to get the water out. So what I'm going to do is, I'll show you first. I've already started cutting it. I'm going to cut it into cubes. I know it's kind of just white. I've already cut it into some sections. I'm going to cut it into cubes, and then I'm going to press it between a couple of towels and, and weigh it down so that the water can get sucked out of it by the, the material in the towels. And then later on, it'll be able to absorb the taste of whatever it is that I am cooking. I did not know about let it, getting the water out of tofu and tofu always it, it never quite absorbed the flavors the way I wanted it to until I learned about this the trick of getting the water out of it first because if you don't get the water out let me see if I can move this if you don't get the water out of your tofu then it's just going to taste like the water in the tofu so so tofu cuts really easily it's an excellent source of protein it is processed soybeans and, you know, it's commonly used in Asian foods, but the more that people are recognizing it for the great source of protein that it is, people are using it in a lot of stuff. I have a chicken, or uh, a chicken-like <laughs> pot pie that I make that I have put, instead of putting baked chicken in it, I put tofu in it. So now I'm just transferring the cubes of tofu over to this, well, let me see, let's see if I can let you see what I'm doing. I'm putting it on this towel. This is a clean towel that I only use for food. So I don't really wash my hands out of it or anything like that. I'm just transferring the cubes over to the towel. And then I'm going to put the rest of the towel over top of it. So in a single layer, you don't want them stacked because you want as much of the water to get out of the tofu as possible. So that there's room for the flavor of, what is it called? The roast beet and carrot to get in it. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, I hear my water starting to boil. Do you use tofu? Comment below if you have ever not tasted tofu or eaten something with it. Depending on where you're first introduced to tofu and in, in what dish or how it was flavored, you may have a love or hate relationship with it. Or you may have a love and hate relationship with it. Tofu for me is a perfect type of little food as far as flavoring it because it literally tastes like what you want it to taste like. This is extra firm tofu. It is created in varying, um, I guess, levels of firmness all the way down to a smooth tofu. It's called silken tofu that is recommended for like smoothies and stuff. So you can actually put, you can actually put uh, tofu inside of a smoothie in place of like a protein powder or things of that nature, and I've done that a lot. But comment below if you have used tofu before, if you've tasted it, what you think about it. 
Tofu, like I said before, it doesn't really taste like anything. It just, it tastes like what it looks like. It's just bland and it is what it is. So I have just finished putting all the tofu blocks on. Now, this is my little rig scenario. I just, I had it on a baking sheet. Now I'm gonna put another baking sheet on top of it and I'm gonna weigh it down with some heavy pots. That's, that's all I'm gonna do. This heavy pot or something that's just gonna keep the weight on it. Kind of, and I use two baking sheets so that the weight of the pot is evenly distrib distributed um, across all the tofu. And I just leave it like that. You can't let that process go on for too long, okay? It, it, in other words, you, it's, not, it's not like you can leave it over there getting the water out for too long. You know, it's never gonna be bone dry. My water has started to boil for my pearl barley. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir it in. Pearl barley is an excellent grain. I'm just recently been introduced to it, but I like it. Again, it's not something that's heavily, doesn't have a heavy taste to it, but it's a good source of, I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know what it's a good source of, right? I'm one of those people that if I read that something's good, I don't necessarily memorize all the good qualities about it. I know pearl barley is good for you, but let me read all the instructions. Yeah, let's see. I'm looking. I see it's got a little iron in it. It's a carbohydrate. It's got some protein in it. Quarter cup of it dry um, has four grams of protein, so it's not a bad protein source. I get the name, I get the brand, the store brand. I don't get a name brand. I got the Kroger brand right here. So, got my pearl barley working. It's going to it's come back to a, it's already back to a boil. So I'm going to turn it down. And actually the instructions say that it needs to cook for 45 minutes. That's the reason why I wanted to get it going uh, early. I just thought about it. I said, <laughs> people are going to come to this video thinking that there's going to be like three different dishes cooked uh, one after another. And actually, I'm cooking three at the same time. But again, I will share with you the recipe um, but in, in the description before or after I'm done with the video. Okay, had a little brief commercial break there. My son called, but I'm back. Okay, so the oven is already preheated and I still have not cubed up my beets and my carrots. They told me to cube, well, they told me to cube up the beets and then cut the carrots um, either in cubes or halved lengthwise. So I'm gonna just cut them in half lengthwise. She wants me to get rid of the stems, so I'm gonna get rid of all the stems on the carrots. Stems tend to be a little bitter, so sometimes recipes want you to take them out if you like to if you like the bitterness of them, leave them in there. They certainly won't hurt you. You can eat a lot. Most vegetables you can eat in their entirety and be just fine. It may just affect the taste of what you're eating. So just kind of depends on what type of uh, taste that you want. One thing that's interesting about beets, they have such a strong color. You know, when you cut into them, I mean, instantly, you better be careful what you are wearing or what you know, what you have in your back, and you're gonna stain something up if you're not careful. So they asked for three small beets, but I have I call this more of a medium size or even a large beet. These are like a small and a medium beet. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and get them ready to go, and then get them in the oven because they have to roast for 45 minutes. So even though the salad doesn't require any stove, uh-oh, doesn't require any stovetop cooking, you do need to leave the beets and the carrots in the oven where they can roast and be yummy. Do you like roasted vegetables? I tell you what, my favorite type of roasted vegetable is um, Brussels sprouts. I love roasted Brussels sprouts. As a matter of fact, that's really the only way I like to eat them. You know, I don't like to, I don't like them steamed or boiled because they just get squishy and gross. To me, some people prefer them that way. Some people, they don't like the roasted ones, but I like a roasted Brussels sprout because it just, it just seems, they're just good. 
So right now I am cutting the ends off of my carrots. I probably should have done this before I started the video because I'm pretty sure you can understand cutting carrots in half. But anyway, we have a chance to talk. So carrots are, <laughs> what, were, what were you taught that carrots are good for when you were growing up? I was taught that they're good for your eyes. Well, I wear pretty strong prescription and I always ate carrots, so I don't know. <laughs> they're a good source of vitamin A. We all know that. But um, I usually don't buy these kind of carrots that have the leaves attached. I usually buy the bags of carrots. You know, I don't know. I think probably the bags of carrots have a longer shelf life, maybe. I don't know. I don't know why they, I don't know why I don't buy these fancy, well, they're not fancy. They're just carrots that have the stems attached, but I don't usually buy carrots by the bunch or by in bulk. I usually buy bags of carrots or even baby carrots, which is just regular carrots that have been cut and smoothed down to a certain size and shape. The true baby carrot is gonna look like a big, the big carrots with the stems and all that. Of course, the baby carrots, the way they sell them in the store, don't have a stem or anything. So that's how you know that they are just a processed regular carrot. But anyway, oh, I was talking about beets a little while ago. So beets have a really strong flavor. After I cut them open, I'm gonna show you, they just have a really strong color. And I think it's really pretty. If you've ever seen pictures, if you're one of my Facebook friends and you've ever seen pictures of me showing my juices when I when I do my juice cleanses or whatever, the red one, they're red because they have beets in them. That is the secret ingredient to the red juice that I drink. Let me turn this this way so you can see me. Okay, so now I'm going to cut off the end. See that? See it on my finger? You see that that just come from the ends of the beets. Beets have a really beautiful red color. Not sure what it is in beets that gives them that strong color, but I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I am one of those cooks that likes to clean as I go. I cannot stand a filthy kitchen while I am trying to cook. I don't like it. So when I'm done cooking, the kitchen is pretty much clean. <laughs> I know some people, they create a huge hurricane of a mess while they're cooking and then they clean it up and there's nothing wrong with that you know to each their own honey but if you come to my house while I'm cooking I'm gonna be washing dishes wiping off surfaces and everything else while I'm cooking and my mother I, must, I guess I must have learned that from my mother I also learned that cooks should be washing their hands regularly especially when they're working with meat <laughs> I remember one time she she was watching uh, what's the show? Rachel Ray's cooking show. Not her talk show where she's got guests and stuff, but just the thing she had, or she might still have the show where she just cooks a dish and shows it to you. And mom said, I don't like when she moves between this and that counter and this and that dish, and she don't wash her hands enough for me. I was like, well, I guess since we don't have to eat the food she's preparing, I can still enjoy the recipes. But I guess when you're demonstrating cooking, you should also demonstrate good form. And I guess that's mom's point. So anyway, go ahead and get these beets done. You don't, you don't peel beets. I guess you could, but I don't peel beets. I use them in their entirety. Her recipe does not say to peel the beets, so I'm not going to peel them. I am just going to cut them with a little bit of skin on them that they have and go from there. Got to get these in the oven. Once they're in the oven and going, then I will get on with the other two dishes. This is, again, for the roast beet and carrot salad, which sounds really good when I was reading about it. But I've never made my own vinaigrette before, and that's what's called for in this recipe. So I guess I need to show you what I'm doing. Let me move the camera real quick so you can see me cutting up my beets. Okay. There's my beets. Here's the only whole one that's still left. This is a half of a beet. I'm just gonna cut it. A lot of vegetables that I didn't grow up necessarily eating, as I'm learning to eat them as an adult, I realize that they're not that difficult to work with. I guess mom just didn't, you know, they weren't on her shopping list, and so she didn't do it. And we, in, we usually tend to grow up and do 
what our parents do unless we're intentional about doing something different. So I had never worked with fresh beets before recently, but they're not hard to cook. You know, they're not hard to work with. This beet has a little strange spot on it. I'm going to cut off and throw away right now. See how your hands get really red? You got to be real careful. I guess I should have an apron on, right? You can tell I'm not an expert video cook. <laughs> and I'm talking about how beets can stain up your clothes, and I've got one of my favorite shirts on right now. But there you go. What's life without a little bit of risk? So now that I am cutting these beets into smaller pieces, I'm probably going to cut my carrots down in size a little bit too. Maybe I'll cut the, the longer ones in half one more time just so I can have these pieces similar in size. I don't know that it requires that for the recipe, but that's what I'm going to do. And I can do that because I'm the one cooking right now, right? So, roasted vegetables. You usually just use a piece of parchment paper, which is what I'm going to use today, to keep them from sticking to the baking sheet. I just thought about it. My baking sheet is being used, both of my baking sheets are being used to press the water out of my, um, out of my tofu. Remember, I used two baking sheets to set that up. But since it's been going a while, I've been pressing the water out of my tofu for a few minutes now. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble that little setup. And I'm going to take one of the, the top one away. The top thing sheet because I need it for my roast vegetables. So one minute, let me get my baking sheet. I will be right back. And they can still sit there and soak. You know, water can still sit there and soak in the... Um, into the towels over there on the table. So I'm gonna read my instructions again. You know, I'm not, not a big recipe follower, but this says, toss the beets and carrots with two tablespoons of oil, lay them down evenly on the parchment paper, sprinkle some salt over them, and roast it for 45 minutes or until tender. So that's what I'm gonna do. Like I said a minute ago, I think I'm gonna cut these carrots. They're, they're half, the length of a carrot, but I'm going to cut them one more time just to get them a little bit smaller. It's just my preference. Nothing that says you can't leave them long, but I figure if this is going to be in a salad, I'm going to want to be able to kind of pick these up with a fork at some point. So, uh, ba -ba -ba -da. when I am tossing my vegetables in oil or, or whatever they're getting tossed in. I usually like to put them in a large bowl and put the oil in and just toss them around. You can use a plastic bag. You can use whatever you want to. I'm going to get a bowl. As a matter of fact, a bowl is right here. Yay! I have a bowl right here on the drain board that I just used. So I am putting my beets in there and I'm putting my carrots in there. And I am putting that cooking sheet, or the cutting board, sorry, in there, in the dishwater that I'm now letting out because it's dirty. <laughs> so let's see, it's asking for two tablespoons of grapeseed oil or olive oil. I actually have both, but I have not used my grapeseed oil yet, so I think I'll use that today. I bought it because I know that recipes call for it. I think I saw it on sale one day. I was like, let me just get it and just have it on hand. So it called for two tablespoons. Normally, again, like I said, I don't measure a lot, but I'm going to just go ahead and do this since we're here. This grapeseed oil is Carlini brand. Carlini, I got it from probably Kroger or somewhere. I don't know. That's the brand I'm using. Or I might have got it at Aldi. Something like that, I probably would have gotten it all because I wasn't going to invest a lot of money in it. You know, those specialty oils can get pretty expensive. So I wasn't going to, um, I wasn't going to spend a lot of money on it when I didn't even know what I was going to use it for. So I've got my two tablespoons of grapeseed oil in here with my vegetables. And I'm just going to toss it around. Woo! Toss it, toss it, toss it, honey. 
Yes. Okay. Here we go. We wipe off. Here, I told you I like to wipe off the surface, honey. I don't like stuff on. I don't like a dirty surface. I like stuff to be clean over and over. And I say, you know, the little bit of carrot leaves and the beet leaves, I have them right here. I'm going to transfer them into a little bowl just so I don't accidentally mess them up. But first, I'm going to move the camera. Here's my baking sheet. My parchment paper is here. I have Reynolds parchment paper. I don't imagine that the brand matters much. I'm going to tear off a piece. Lay it here on the baking sheet and I'm going to put these in an even look at that mmm beets and carrots love it I could actually throw them in a juicer right now and drink really good uh, but I'm not going to <laughs> I'm going to leave them the way they are and do the recipe like she called for again shout out to Sweet Potato Soul for providing inspiring these recipes and for sharing them with we your followers maybe one day i will have a recipe that i share it won't be my cornbread recipe sorry curtis and everybody else who wants it that's a family secret sometimes i might make you cornbread but i'm not going to tell you how to make it absolutely not absolutely not no ma'am no sir okay He's been trying to get my recipe. He's not getting my recipe. I don't know. You know, he could try to sell it on the internet or anything. I can't, you don't trust everybody with your family secrets, honey. So it says to sprinkle some salt. Yeah, I'm just going to put, yeah. Well, yeah, it doesn't tell me how much salt. I know how much salt to put. Just shake it till your wrist gets tired, honey. And then you close, you put the salt back. You open the oven. Boom! It's in there. Set the timer. And once you set the timer, you don't have to worry about burning it. Now, what I didn't set the timer for was my pearl barley, so I'm going to have to keep checking it because I don't remember how long it's been in there. I know this video is at the 32-minute mark, and I didn't put it in right away, so I've still got some time to go on the barley. So that's that. Okay. I need to transfer the beet and carrot leaves into a little bowl just to keep them from getting lost in the shuffle here on the counter because they're just sitting here on the counter. It's not that much of them. So I'm going to have to just make do with whatever the recipe calls for. I hope this is going to be enough. Okay, so let me go back and look at my recipes. I'm not going to worry about chopping the kale right now. Okay, let's start in on our... Let's see both of these have a long cook time I'm gonna go into the lentil sweet potato chili okay I'm supposed to warm the oil in a Dutch oven I do have a Dutch oven I don't always use it whenever they call for a Dutch oven but today I'm be fancy since I'm making a video and I'm gonna actually use my Dutch oven I have a Dutch oven that that actually matches my French white, you know, Corel French white dishes. And I love it. I don't use it very often because for some reason they made the handles on this particular one. They are, they get hot when the pot is hot. Like who does that? That's a, that's a poor design. I should be able to pick up this pot when it's hot and not have to worry about burning my hands. So I have to use a pot holder when I use it. But you know, that's, that's a small thing. At least it matches my other dishes with the little stripes. Okay, so they want me to warm the oil in a Dutch oven over medium heat. Now, one thing I have learned about my, the, my uh, regular cookware is that I never need to use the amount of heat or the level of heat that it calls for. My kitchen craft or my, yeah, my kitchen craft dishes or pots, they hold heat very well. So when it calls for medium heat, I need to turn it down to medium low. When it calls for high, I'm on medium high or even medium because they really retain heat well. But for the Dutch oven, I'm gonna use the temperature that it says because that's not kitchen craft. Anyway, it's asked me to warm a tablespoon of canola oil. So 
let me get that going. Still got my spoon here with the other oil in it. So I'm gonna turn here and put canola oil in it. I don't cook with as much oil as I used to just because I have this waterless cookware that's designed to cook food without oil or water. And you know, so I don't ever, I hardly use oil when I'm using my kitchen craft because that's, it's designed to help you eat healthier by eliminating the need for oil or even water, which can cook away nutrients as well sometimes. But I'm gonna use the oil in the Dutch oven. I've already cut up my onions and my garlic. They ask for a half of a yellow onion and three, clo three cloves of garlic. It's a little tongue twister. So I actually have that stuff here already measured out and ready to go. So while I'm waiting for the oil to heat up, let me make me some more dishwater. So do you like uh, um, onions? I have a friend who does not like onions. And when she first told me that, it blew my mind because, you know, my mother always used onions to start every dish. You know, everything starts with a, a diced onion or a chopped onion. So I'm thinking, how do you eat? Like, hey, <laughs> how do you, like, what do you cook that doesn't have onions in it? And I know you can make pretty much anything without onions. I mean, you don't have to put the onions just because the recipe calls for it. A lot of times, but I'm just like, wow. Well, I can't help you because I put onions in a lot of stuff. You know, these are yellow onions. I also uh, like red onions. I like white onions. I like green onions. I like any. You know, I like onion. Raw, cooked, doesn't matter. I like both. And, you know, comment below. Do you like onions or are you kind of repulsed by them? Do you cook with them a lot or not? Let me turn this down so you can hear me. Okay, I think my oil is starting to heat up. I'm going to actually test my pearled barley for the salad to see how it's doing since I did not see what time it was when I put it on. Okay. It still needs some time. I usually don't taste my food while I'm cooking it. I just, I just don't. I'm not one of those. I've got my three coals of garlic already cut up. Oh, my light's kind of bright. You can't even see my stuff. Okay. <laughs> really? I just spilled, you know what? <laughs> I just spilled my, some of my garlic onto my keyboard. Isn't that something? Okay, so now I've learned a lesson. Let me pause it real quick and, and get some more garlic cut up. Okay, I am back after my little garlic spilling episode. I had to clean up my computer and <laughs> get some more garlic. And so now I'm back. So I, and I accidentally stopped the video instead of just pausing it. So I had to string two videos together. But anyway, I'm here. And as far as you're concerned, it's one long video. So there you go. Anyway, I chopped up the garlic in advance. I chopped up the onions in advance. And so it told me to heat the Dutch oven, the oil in the Dutch oven over medium heat. And like I told you, my Dutch oven unfortunately conducts heat into the handles. So I have to be really careful when I'm using it, but I don't burn myself. So here I am, I'm dropping the garlic into the pot and it's sizzling and sounding really good. I love garlic, honey. Now I've learned through the years that no matter what temperature you start your onions and garlic on, you're probably going to need to turn it down or they're going to burn or cook faster than you want them to. So we're going to saute those until the onions have softened. That can take several minutes depending on the type of onion you use. And I'm here to tell you that you can use whatever kind of onion you want. I've learned that from a lot of recipes, yellow and white onions, can be interchangeable. And if all you have is red onions, you can use those too. It might change the texture or the taste a little bit because some onions are stronger than others. But you know, if all you have is a red onion, you don't need to run to the store because the recipe said yellow, use red. It's gonna make the recipe look different too. But again, if you don't care what it looks like, then just use the kind of onion that you have. So while that is sauteing, it's going to add, it's telling me after the onions have softened, I need to add the lentils. These are raw lentils, okay? A can of diced tomatoes, my diced sweet potatoes, some cumin, and my chili powder. 
and then three and three quarter cups of water. One trick that I have learned uh, with recipes is that for a lot of recipes, instead of water, I will put vegetable broth or you know imitation chicken broth or whatever, because it gives it a depth of flavor that maybe the original recipe writer didn't think about, but it can make your food taste different. You don't want to do that for every recipe because some recipes you, you just want water. But I can read this recipe and tell, they call it a chili. It needs to have some more depth to the flavor. So I am adding, um, I had like three and a half uh, cups of this vegetable broth. It's organic vegetable broth. This light is killing me. I don't know how to do it. Okay. This is a Simply Nature brand that they sell at, I believe, Aldi. I used that three and a half cups and then I added like a quarter cup of water to it to get it up to three and three quarter cups. But I'm gonna go ahead and get my cumin out and my chili powder. So there's my chili powder and my cumin is normally right there. So there you go, spice time. There you go, got my spices ready to go. I'm gonna stir my onions and garlic. Do you have a Dutch oven? You know, I didn't have one for a long time. I, I would read recipes and I'd be like, I don't know what that is. And so I would just use a big pot. It usually works out fine. I'm sure there's some benefit to using a Dutch oven, but you know, I don't want you to think that you have to use one every time the recipe calls for it. Because quite frankly, I don't see much difference between how a Dutch oven cooks and how a regular big kettle cooks. That's just me. Maybe you know the difference. Let me know in the comments below if you know why you should use a Dutch oven every time it calls for it. Is there some great reason for it? So, onions are cooking. I've already got my sweet potatoes diced up. I've already got my lentils measured out. So there's my sweet potatoes. That's one sweet potato already diced up. This is my lentils. Now the recipe called for raw green lentils. I happen to have a bag of lentils that I caught on clearance at Kroger. I love the clearance bin at Kroger, honey. Love it. You can find all kinds of cool stuff there. They are called mung bean split green mung dal, which means they are a green lentil, a split green lentil. They are organic. I caught it on clearance. I figured, why not? It was a two-pound bag. They normally sell it for $10. It was $5. Um, but it is a green split pea. So I'm using those. Moon, do moon bean split. Green moon dog. I don't know. I've got some friends who are Indian. and Maybe they can help me out with those words. But that's what I'm using for my green lentils. Uh, we're going to put that in there and bring, okay, medium, low heat. Yeah, yeah. That's going to take 45 minutes to cook. So I'm going to keep stirring my onions. They're starting to brown. So they are beginning to soften. If I give them a couple more minutes and I'll add these other ingredients. And then this pot is on its way. Got 30 minutes left on the roasted vegetables for the salad, okay? So they still have some time. Let me test my pearl barley again. Oh yeah, not much longer on that. I like my grains to have a little, a little bite to it, you know? So I don't like to overcook those. So now let me look at my third recipe. We've got my lentil sweet potato chili going. That's what's in the Dutch oven. We've got the roast beet and carrot salad going. That's what the pearl barley and the um, roasted vegetables is for. The third recipe is, drum roll please, sweet potato and tofu curry. Actually, we have that going because the tofu is sitting over there uh, getting the water squeezed out of it. It's probably ready to go. So as soon as I get the Dutch oven working so that it's, you know, it's got to cook for 45 minutes. So once I get going with that, then I will switch over to the sweet potato and tofu curry. I hope you follow this. This is how I cook. You got to find your critical path. My mother always used to say that you got to find your critical path. What do you need to get going? And while it's going, then you can get something else going. And while that's going, you shouldn't have to cook. When you get experience with cooking, you shouldn't only have to work on one thing at a time unless you just want to. Yeah, I've got three things going here. And if this is part of a meal plan, technically I was supposed to cook five or six dishes today. And so I need to be able to cook all this at once. So 
Back to the lentil sweet potato chili. It says once the onions have softened, or softened, add the lentils, the diced tomatoes. That's what I need. Got my diced tomatoes again. You know, I'm all about the house brand. That's Kroger brand. I'm gonna get out my little fancy can opener that that lets you open the can without creating a dangerous sharp edge to cut yourself on, which I like because I remember cutting myself a few times when I was a kid um, on cans. So I am opening that. Got my can opened. I'm a big recycler, so I always rinse my cans out. They're going to go outside with all this other recyclable stuff. So I am going to first add the diced tomato just because they have liquid in them. And I'm going to get them in the bottom of the pan. I don't know. I have to figure out. I guess I'm going to bring the laptop over here once this is going to show you what's in here. I am going to now add the raw lentils. I'm going to add all of that. They said add the sweet potatoes, the cumin, and the cilantro. So, I'm not cilantro, chili powder. And I need a tablespoon each of those. I just used one of my tablespoons to measure oil, but I have like five different sets of measuring spoons, and I love them. If I were one of those minimalist people, I would only have one set, but I'm like, I use so many while I'm cooking. Like, you don't want to have to wash it out every time you put something in it. So I've got another tablespoon that I didn't use before that I can use to measure my cumin. And so I measure stuff like this, but then I just eyeball it. You don't have to be exact, you feel me? You don't have to be exact when you know what you're doing. Let's say it that way. You shouldn't eyeball it if you don't know what you're doing. You should measure it as precisely as you can. <laughs> Um, so get all this in here. Ooh, this looks good, honey. Yes! Hey! hey. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna add my vegetable broth with a little bit of water in it just to get me this to the right temperature or the right uh, volume. And I am pouring it in. I am pouring it in. I have poured it in. So that's me. Again, I've substituted vegetable broth for the majority of the water that the recipe called for because I can do that. Because I, I can do that. Because I know it's going to make it taste good. And it says bring it to a simmer. So I'm going to turn it back up. I already turned it back up rather a little bit. Just so we can get back to a simmer very quickly. I'm going to show you this. I hope I don't <laughs> Don't drop my laptop. I need to figure out how people make all those fancy videos with cameras everywhere. And you can see into their pots and on their counters. I guess they just, ah, woo. Can you see that? That's my chip. That's my tomatoes. That's my um, sweet potatoes, my onions, my garlic, my cumin, my chili powder, and my lentils are all in there. So once that comes back to a simmer, then I will put the lid on it, uh, put it on medium-low heat, and let it cook. It says until the lentils and the sweet potatoes are tender or five, 45 minutes. I'll probably set the timer to at least 40 minutes, and I'll test everything and then see if it needs to go a little bit longer. So let me put the lid on that, get that back to a simmer. I'm going to test my... Pearl barley, one more time. Let me show you this pearl barley. I'm not going to drop it on the, um, on the counter. I know that you can't really see it. <laughs> Little barley. Okay. So I'm going to turn the barley off. I'm going to leave it sitting there with the lid on slightly. Because I know that it goes in a salad. So if it goes in a salad, it can't be super hot. So it probably has to cool down anyway. Okay, rinsing my cans off. And again, you know I like a clean kitchen, honey. So, let me put these spices back. I don't think I'm going to need them anymore anyway. Okay, so that is going. Checking to see if it's at a simmer. Yet. It is not. Okay, you know how they say a watch pot never boils? Okay. So now we have moved on to the sweet potato and tofu curry. 
It says pour one quarter cup of water into a skillet and bring it to a simmer on medium heat. I'm gonna actually use the skillet that is holding down my tofu. I'm gonna use that one after I wipe off my burner. I got one of those glass top burner situations on these stoves at this new house. I've always had the little, you know those little electric stoves with the little heating element. That's what I'm used to. But now I've gotten so fancy now I have the glass top and I'm always seeing stuff on it. Got to keep wiping it off. So a quarter cup of water. I actually already have a measuring cup right here in the dish pan. I will just wash it. Instead of getting out another one, I just wash this one. And put a quarter cup of water. Well, kind of big. I don't want to use that one. I don't want to use that one. It's kind of big. It's hard to measure small amounts in that big old thing. I'll get my little one after all. So there's my quarter cup of water, give or take. It's just gonna be for a little simmer. It won't take it long to heat up. So let's see. I'm gonna put the onions and garlic in there and saute them in water, just like in oil. Once the onions are soft, I'm gonna add curry powder. So this time I need curry powder. My coconut milk, water, sweet potato. Oh, I see what happened. Okay. I missed one of my sweet potatoes when I was prepping. So I need to prep my sweet potato real quick. I thought I only needed one sweet potato for what I was making today, but I remember now this recipe calls for a sweet potato too. So I gotta get sweet potato number two, okay? Let me go ahead and get him washed up and ready. Normally I wash my vegetables a lot longer than this and I use vegetable cleaner and all that, but since I'm peeling a sweet potato, I don't feel that it's as big of a deal to clean the skins a long time. Now, if I was eating, like if I was baking the sweet potato and I wanted to eat the skins maybe, you know, sometimes you eat baked potato skins or you eat sweet potato skins. I would make sure they were clean. But I just needed to get them clean enough so that as I'm peeling it, it's not transferring any dirt into the part that I am going to eat. So this sweet potato needs to be cubed as well. I like sweet potatoes. They are less of a problem than white potatoes. And by problem, I just mean like when you're trying to cut carbs or when you're trying to, you know, there's certain diets that you can eat sweet potatoes, but not white potatoes. And I say you're not losing there. You know, white potatoes are awesome. I mean, they they're the source of French fries and baked potatoes and all that. But as long as you can have a sweet potato, you can make sweet potato fries for crying out loud. That's like a thing. It didn't use to be a thing, but it is now. Okay, my chili is not simmering yet. But oh, I, <laughs> all my water is gone out of my pot. All right, go ahead and get these onions in here. I had already measured my garlic for this dish too. And I measured the, I cut up the onion as well. So let me go ahead and put the onion in the pan. Turn it down, because again, my pots, my pots go on and do what they, were born to do, and so you don't, it don't take a whole lot. So you gotta watch them or you burn something up. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna get another wooden spoon. I like stirring with wooden spoons. I don't know when I started doing that, because I used to always use metal spoons. But I like stirring with, uh, I like stirring with wooden spoons. It's a lot easier on dishes that can scratch, that's for sure. So, Oh, it's starting to simmer. Yay! Oh, it smells so good, people. Yes! Ooh! I can't wait to eat this. And I hope I have more than what the recipe said it was going to make. Sometimes I'll double or triple a recipe on the fly. But since I have three dishes going, I didn't want to overdo it. So, my onions and garlic for my sweet potato and tofu curry are are um, sauteing. And so I need to go ahead and get this sweet potato cut up since I did not realize I had not done that. 
Where is my good knife? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't know what the knife was that I'm looking for, but I'm going to go ahead and use this other knife. I'm going to get this cut up. Turn the thing so you can watch me chop my sweet potato. This is not my favorite knife for this purpose, but it's the knife for today. It's the knife I have. If you can't cut with the knife you love, honey, <laughs> cut with the one you have, honey. Okay, that was awful. Anyway, don't cut your fingers off. That's one, that's one uh, pro tip. Always make sure when you are cutting with a knife that your fingers are either curled away from it or completely out of the line of fire. You don't want to cut your fingertip off when you accidentally lose control of your knife. So always make sure that your fingers are away from the direction in which the knife is moving. If you're cutting near your hand, don't have your hand like this. Have it, you know, put the knuckles right there. I learned that somewhere, I don't know where. But I'm dicing up this sweet potato because it goes in this dish that I'm working on right now. Still got 16 minutes to go on my, oops, let's put a little bit more water in there. 16 minutes to go on the roasted vegetables. The uh, chili is at a nice, Boil, so I turned it all the way down so it can simmer on low. I think it said medium low. And I got my onions and garlic going. Okay, back to this. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay, so let me finish doing this. Yeah, like I said, sweet potato fries is a new thing that everybody's all into. You know, restaurants are selling them. I'm just like, where are these sweet potatoes been all these years? There haven't been anything like that, but, you know, I guess when people, you know, food, food follows trends just like everything else does. So I guess somebody did it and everybody liked it. And now everybody got sweet potato fries. There's, I went to some restaurant, they don't even serve, serve regular fries at all. They only have sweet potato fries, so I think it's considered a health conscious choice or something like that. So chop, chop, chop. These aren't going to be as small of pieces of sweet potato as in the first set because I'm rushing, but I think they will still cook down. They'll be fine. Mm -mm. I was thinking about having music playing in the background while I was cooking, but then I realized there's a whole thing with copyrights and all that. You got to get royalty-free music and all that. I said, okay. Well, I'll just hum for the people. They can't, they can't get me for humming my own little tunes, right? Okay, so my sweet potatoes are done. That chili smells awesome. Okay. Don't want my onions to things to burn, so I need to add my tablespoon and a half of curry powder. And I learned that the curry powder is not a one size fits all type of thing. Like curry powder can be, it can taste a little different depending on who's making it, what part of the world it's from. All curry is not created equal. And I use the one that comes with the spices, you know, whatever spice, I, spice brand I'm buying at the time, that's the one I'm using. So Whatever they refer to as curry powder, that's what I'm using, okay? It says to let this toast for about 30 seconds. So I'm mixing my curry, I'll show you. Mixing my curry powder in with my onions and garlic. Oh my goodness, it smells like my favorite type of food. What do you think my favorite type of food is? It is Indian food. Love it, honey. If you don't love it, I am so sorry for you. <laughs> All their food is so awesome. I love Indian food. After I let that toast for 30 seconds, I'm adding my coconut milk. Again, the house brand, Kroger. It's 
open that up. I like to shake it because if you know anything about canned coconut milk, it sits on the shelf a while and it can certainly settle. And you have a big old blob of coconut solids on one end and water on the other end. So you need to make sure that you shake it up. If you don't shake it up and you pour it out and it's a blob of water, you can, you can always mix it back in. When you're using it in this kind of a capacity, you can mix it later. It doesn't, you can mix it after you pour it out. It's fine. But I like to shake mine up at least a little bit while it is still in the can. So it wants me to add my coconut water, my coconut milk plus some water. It wants, how much water do you want? Uh, it's not telling me. Oh, plus two cups of water. One can of full fat coconut milk. So sometimes I like to use light coconut milk, but if a recipe says it needs to be the full fat kind, then that's what I'm going to use. So actually, I'm going to pour my coconut milk into the water and then put it straight into the pan, just like that. And the good thing is this liquid will get any of the spice that had a chance to stick the bottom of the skillet. It's going to pull all of that up off the bottom, you know, as it cooks. This is the basis of a lot of Asian dishes, particularly Indian food, but other Asian dishes as well use coconut milk. Caribbean food also uses coconut milk a lot. A very good way to... As Curtis likes to say, enhance the flavor profile of your food. He's so fancy. <laughs> flavor profile. So sweet potatoes and the tofu. Okay. Let me go ahead and wipe off. You know, I like to keep my kitchen clean. I spill something I like to clean up. But I can't do it. All right. Let me throw this sweet potato in there. The bigger pieces mean they're probably going to have to cook a little longer. Although the recipe did not say how big. It just said cubed. But, you know, I like smaller cubes sometimes. I didn't do that this time because I was rushing. So now my sweet potatoes are in the coconut milk water onion garlic. And I'm also going to close this cabinet and get the tofu that has been getting the water sucked out of it. So if I had used this tofu straight from the package and just cubed it up, it wouldn't soak in this stuff that I'm cooking right now because it would already be full of water. So I'll just pick up the towel like so and just kind of gently drop the tofu in to the mixture. Unless you toast your tofu, it's going to pretty much stay the same color that it already is. But, you know, the taste is what's going to, it's going to really soak up. This would probably, in a regular recipe, a meat recipe, would probably be chicken. Or I guess you could use lamb or any, any type of meat. Whatever meat you're using, it could be used in this recipe. But this is a vegan recipe. And so it's using tofu. I hope you guys can smell what I am cooking. You know how they say you smell what the can you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> Back in his wrestling days. Well, can you smell what MJ is cooking, honey? Because I got curry going over here, got cumin, chili powder in that pot, roasted vegetables on gonna be on deck in about nine minutes. So it smells really good in here. The ironic part is I'm not really hungry. It's kind of late. So I shouldn't be eating at this time of night in TV. So I'm just going to, well, I told you I'm doing this for a meal prep. So I'm going to put these dishes into the little containers and then they'll be ready to go tomorrow and for the rest of the week. Okay, let's see what we have going. Bring it to a simmer and cook for 20 minutes. So I need my lid. Turn it up. Turn the stove up, honey. Let's see here. Take curry powder off of the spoon and into the mix. Okay. Once that gets simmering, if I remember, I'll bring it over here. Bring it over here so y'all can smell it. Okay. 
So I think we've got everything going that we need to have going for right now. I need to prepare my kale. Kale actually is part of two of these dishes. The roasted beet salad, that involves uh, some thinly sliced kale. And then the curry that I've got going just now is needs a half bunch of chopped kale. So this here is two bunches of kale, but I haven't really cut any of it. So I'm going to get another bowl right off of here and half of it I'm going to take for the salad. And it said slice it thinly. So I guess the roast vegetables are gonna be big pieces, but this, uh, you want the kale to be pretty thin. So let's see what I do here. I guess I'll put the camera down here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Move this out of the way. This is going, I keep checking everything, make sure I got everything going. <laughs> Three recipes at once, honey, it's a lot. So let me see, I'm gonna push it off here on my clean counter. I'm gonna get my favorite knife out. Where is my favorite knife? You got a favorite knife that you like to use for everything? Oh, here it is. And here's the other knife I was looking for, for the sweet potatoes. I have a favorite knife. It came with my Farberware and it looks like this. I use them for everything. He's a perfect size. He has the perfect type of little teeth. He can cut anything. So that's why I like it. He gets used a lot. I imagine if any of my knives needs to be replaced soon, or first, it would be this one. So again, I'm cutting this really thinly because that's what the recipe calls for. Again, got my fingers tucked out of the way because when you're cutting fast, you don't always think about how hard you might be cutting and you could do some real damage in one swipe. So that's that. Take a big old hunk of it and just go to town. This is for our salad. So I'm barely moving over. I might be moving over half an inch for each swipe. A lot of times when I deal with kale, I don't cut it with a knife. I can't remember why. I remember there was a reason. I think it, I don't know. I don't remember why, but there was a reason why I usually don't cut my kale with a knife. I just tear it. But because these pieces need to be so small, I have to. But it's fine. It's going to be all right. I think I, think I can do all this in one fell swoop. Yeah, I think I can finish this. If I, keep, if I quit dropping it in my dishwasher, I'll be able to do that, right? Okay, I thank you guys for staying with me. If you're still here or maybe you skipped ahead in the video, hope you are enjoying. Be sure to comment. Be sure to like this video, comment in the section below and let me know what, what you think. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm a brand new YouTuber and I know nothing about being a YouTube content creator. Uh, so this is all new to me, but please subscribe and then be sure to click on the little bell icon right when you're subscribing so you can get notifications in your email box or I don't even know, maybe it'll send it by text, I don't know. Um, but I know it'll send you an email. Oh, I know, um, on your phone, it can give you a pop-up notification. I know the, the people I subscribe to, when they put new videos out, it sends me a little banner pop-up at the top of my phone screen to let me know. Some of my favorite YouTubers include comedian Trey Kennedy, comedian John Christ, Roll with Cole and Charisma. That's an excellent vlog. Two young people. Um, he is a quadriplegic. She is able-bodied. And they have just literally taken the internet by storm and I enjoy all their content. But I subscribe to them so that when they put out something new, I know immediately. Some people I'm subscribed to, I don't want to know when they put out new content, which makes me wonder why am I even subscribing? Um, but there you go. But uh, please subscribe and then share this video on your social media, whether you want to share it on Facebook or 
I don't know, Twitter, wherever else you can share it. Just to let people know, you know, just come support. Okay, so that is my thinly sliced bowl of kale. Right there. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Then I need to take half of this bunch. I think that's about half. And it should be chopped. Let's see, what did it say? It says one bunch of kale chopped. I really could just tear it by hand, but let me turn back around here and get to my, where did my towel go? There it is. Get to my curry, which has begun to cook wildly and turn the heat down <laughs> so it does not cook itself to death. It said to cook it, bring it to a simmer and cook for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to use my other timer. And it is simmering. I said I was going to bring you guys over here so you can see what I am cooking. See if I can get this hooked up. So yeah, you got your bits of sweet potato. You got your tofu. And doesn't that look delicious? So even though it looks very, well, it is very creamy, there's no milk in it. Usually there would be a milk product like yogurt or something. If you go to an Indian restaurant, if they have, unless it's vegan, if they have a cream, creamy sauce of any kind, it's going to be involving yogurt. Here is our chili that we had going in the Dutch oven. So it is looking very good. I don't remember setting the timer for that. <laughs> I've got two timers, one on the microwave and one on the stove, but sometimes I forget to start them. So it said 45 minutes, so I know I'll be done with the curry before I'm done with, before the um, chili is supposed to be done. So I'm just tearing, tearing the kale. I figured you didn't need to see that. Just tearing it in pieces. It was already in relatively small pieces from when I took them off the stem. So there, this is going to go into the curry uh, after the 20 minute mark. Or I guess I should say after the sweet potato is tender. You usually don't put kale in your recipes until down towards the end. It is a pretty delicate green. doesn't require a lot of cooking, so you don't need to put it in early. Same with spinach. You know, you just, it just needs to go in at the end. You don't have to cook it to death because it's going to wilt as soon as it hits the hot water. And, you know, you don't want it to disappear on you by overcooking it. Plus, all your nutrients are going out as you're cooking it. So... You want to just do it as little as possible, it being cooked. Okay, I don't like the way that piece of kale looked. I went through it earlier, but sometimes the bad pieces escape. Okay, that little bell means that our, ooh, that our roasted vegetables are ready. So I'm going to get a container. Well, actually, I can leave the kale on here. I don't need to move it. I don't know if I need my cutting board anymore. Rinse my hands. Dry my hands. Get my... Okay, okay. Oh, my goodness. Little, little uh, timer thinks it's in charge. Like, I'm in charge. You're not in charge. You don't tell me what to do. Okay, here we go. Knock them off on now, normally when I'm roasting vegetables, I would have turned them over at some point. I literally did not remember to do that, so I did not do it. But they look delicioso. So that is the roast vegetables. I'm going to just sit them up on the counter. Again, because they are going in a salad, I imagine they need to cool. So they can just sit there until I get back to their recipe and figure out what I'm supposed to do next. 20 minutes on that, 45 minutes on that. Let's see. Well, I think I will go back to the salad recipe because my curry has another, what, 16 and a half minutes to go. My um, chili is still going. My lentil sweet potato chili still needs a lot of time. It has sweet potatoes that need to get tender. And it will be done, actually. I have fresh cilantro for the chili, but that's pretty much done. So back to my salad. Place the chopped kale in a large mixing bowl and set the pearl barley to the side while you make the vinaigrettes. Okay, so the vinaigrette involves five ingredients. Olive oil, maple syrup, apple cider vinegar, 
uh, Dijon mustard and black pepper, which I don't often use black pepper. So I don't even know if I have any, let me check. I don't have any black pepper, so I will be substituting red pepper. Yeah, which is fine. Pepper is for heat. Whatever kind of pepper you want to use, use it. So my apple cider vinegar is in the cabinet. So that's where I'm getting it. Maple syrup is right here. I use the Aldi brand. I use the Aldi brand for a lot of stuff. Aldi is super cheap. Um, here's my apple cider vinegar, my olive oil, which is the Bertoli brand, <laughs> the pss, ground red pepper brand. That's literally what the, oh, I wish you could see it. That's literally what the brand name says. P-S, there you go. P-S-S-T. I guess those are really dollar signs, but whatever. Okay. And what was the other ingredient? It, Dijon mustard. Yes. Okay, got my Dijon mustard. I always shake up mustard before I use it. So it just says put all the ingredients into a jar and shake them vigorously. A jar with a lid. I'm going to use one of my small mason jars because I think they would be perfect. The challenge is going to be finding my small mason jars. I can always tell when other people have been putting my dishes away because I can't sometimes can't find what I'm looking for. But I think in this case, it's not anybody's fault because I just found it. So this is a little small mason jar. I think this is an eight ounce. I think this is an eight ounce mason jar. This should be enough. So it's asking for two tablespoons of olive oil. So let's put two tablespoons. I've never made my own vent. Well, is that true? Maybe I have made my own vinaigrette. I don't know. I don't think I have. This is not, I've made some kind of a fresh um, sour dressing of some sort, but I don't know if it was a vinaigrette or what it was. So we are down to the dregs on this bottle of olive oil. So let me go ahead and get the other one opened up. I was fancy. I think this was on sale. I got the Pompeian. You know, I, I thought I was doing something. Normally can't afford this brand. This brand is a little extra. You know what? I see what's draining out of the bottle, and I think it's enough. I'm not going to open that up. So I'm just going to let that be what it is. Pour what's in the spoon in, and that's going to be enough. Remember, we don't have to always measure everything perfectly. So two tables, uh, a teaspoon of maple syrup. I got these at the state fair, I think this year, and it's actually a measuring spoon that has a tablespoon, a teaspoon, a half teaspoon, and a quarter teaspoon, all on one uh, individual item. So that's kind of cool. So actually I can just turn it over and do my teaspoon, or not even turn it over, go to the other side cup and put my maple syrup in there. Ooh. Yay. And then my Dijon, actually two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I will just use the same spoon. Since all these ingredients are going into the same receptacle, uh -oh. the lid has gotten jammed on there. So it needed a little help to get open. Whew. Apple cider vinegar, good for many uses, one of which is clarifying hair. For all my natural hair people out there, do you rinse your hair with apple cider vinegar? Because if you don't, you don't know what you're missing, honey. It will get you all the way together. One teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Is it that in there? Oh, I guess you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. I forgot. Hold on. I gotta get used to it. I'm talking to you, but I'm not showing you what I'm doing. So there's that. Okay. I'm going to rinse them off. Get this oil off my hand. And then half teaspoon of black pepper. Like I said, I've got multiple sets of measuring spoons. So, usually when I'm done cooking, I have several measuring spoons in the dishwater. No harm done. Boom. 
And it says to put them in there, put the lid on them and what? Shake vigorously. I can do that. Shaking vigorously. Woo! Um, um, I can close this up. Put my red pepper away. I'm always doing 500 things at one time. Trying to be efficient. The jar is up. Oh, it's a nice brown color that you can't see because of my bright light. You see that? Yeah, that's my, what do they call it? Simple vinaigrette. Okay, so it's a simple vinaigrette. We don't have a complex vinaigrette. We have a simple one. Putting my ACV away. Putting my mustard away. Everything is still going. I got 10 minutes left on my curry before I add the kale. Got my vinaigrette ready to go. Let's see. And then they want me to make a, for the dressing over the kale, use your hands to massage it into the, oh, okay. You're gonna put the, the whole salad together, but, um, but it's supposed to stay fresh in the refrigerator for four days, which is kind of cool since this is a week, a weekly meal plan. So I'm going to make the carrot top gramolata. I don't know if I said that word right or not. If I didn't, do not say anything about it. Don't tell the people if I butchered it. The word is spelled G-R-E-M-O-L-A-T-A. -E I read that as gramolata. But it's something that I'm gonna make with the, remember I had to reserve those dishes, those um, carrot leaves that I have hardly had any left and the beet leaves. So I guess I do need to move my greens, my chopped greens off of the cutting board because I need the cutting board for something else. I'm gonna put these chopped or torn kale, I didn't chop it. The torn kale I'm gonna put in another container, and set it over here, rinse off. Rinse off. Mom, you proud of me? I'm washing my hands a lot. I know you're out there watching. I wash my hands a lot and I'm cleaning as I go. I clean. When I have guests in my house, they're eating. I'm cleaning. I tell them, you don't have to leave, but I'm cleaning. So when you do leave, I won't have this mountain of stuff left to do before I can go to bed or before I can relax. So I always clean as I go. That's my pro tip. I can't teach you anything else. I can teach you to clean as you go. So it says that to make this carrot top gremolata, I need to finely mince the carrot tops, the salt, and the garlic together. And she offers a video that I could watch if I needed her help, but I think I can do it without her help. I just hope I do it right. <laughs> okay, so I've got carrot tops and beets. I'm already not following her recipe exactly, so I figured I'd just go rogue and just do what I want to do. Because I can do that. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to be showing you. So that's the carrot tops and the beets right there. It also involves a half teaspoon of salt. I'm going to get my pink salt out. I'm going to get another one of my little measuring spoons. A half teaspoon. And one clove of garlic mince. You mean I was supposed to have another clove of garlic? And I didn't do it. I guess I'm glad I did prepare a lot of this stuff in advance, but I did miss this one clove of garlic that I was supposed to mince before hand. So I guess I'll be doing it right now. Got my favorite knife. Cut the little end off. Get the skins off the little buddy. He is cute. He's a cute little clove of garlic. I like fresh garlic. I do use minced garlic in a jar sometimes when I'm pressed for time or I'm not pressed for time but I'm being lazy. But if I have fresh garlic, I like to use it because it is a lot better. It has a lot more flavor than the stuff floating around in oil. So she said mince this stuff together. Now, I've never done this, so I'm making this up as I go along. I assume she means as you're cutting it, you should the stop, everything should be together while you're butchering it like I'm doing right now. I guess so everything can kind of get mixed together. I don't know. 
I don't know why. I don't even know what a gremolade is or how you pronounce it. So why would I know why you do it this way? One day I will have to go to a store that sells their bunch carrots with the leaves still attached so that I can see what this tastes like with actual carrot tops instead of carrot and beet tops. I don't think it'd be much different. You know, leaves are leaves, right? Tops are tops, greens are greens. Actually, that's not true. When I was growing up, my mother never made collard greens. She made kale, mustard, turnip. I don't remember actually cooking greens at home, uh, collard greens at home until I was an adult. Now, if that's not true, mom, let me know. But I don't remember collard greens being a part of what you fed me at home. That's why I love kale so much, because you that's what you fed me. So she would make mixed greens, um, which would turn up your mustard, you know, and your kale together, or just turn up and mustard, however you do it. But uh, I don't remember collard greens, but all greens are not actually created equal. They're all very good for you. She would do Swiss chard every once in a while. I remember Swiss chard. It is a really strong, iron-rich green. A lot of stores don't even sell Swiss chard. It's got kind of a, I think the stems are kind of red in color. And uh, they're really good too. But I love greens. Greens are my favorite food. I always used to say that growing up. I think they still are. I don't eat greens as much as I should. And I'm going to get back to doing that. But uh, I love greens. I can eat greens by themselves. I love the way African dishes prepare greens. I love, you know, Caribbean food. Any greens, really, unless you really jack them up with something crazy in them, like raisins or something. <laughs> like, Susan, don't add anything. Or who is not Susan? Is it not Susan? It's who is it they say is the, the lady who's always putting weird stuff in the potato salad? Karen. That's her name, Karen. If you try to put something weird in the greens, you're not, you, you, you just need to stop. But normally I like pretty much anybody's greens unless they're just really nasty or if they have like pork in them or something. So I think I have done this grimulade justice. It said to mince all that together until they're very finely chopped, pour the olive oil over it. I need to get a little bowl. Pour a little bit of olive oil over the top of it and use my knife to mix the olive oil into this little mixture. This actually looks good. I've never made a grimolata before. It actually seems kind of fancy. But it really is not that fancy, but it seems like it is. Again, special shout out to Sweet Potato Soul for inspiring this video by providing the recipes uh, that I am using today. You are, I would encourage you to um, subscribe to her blog as well. You know, normally we think you wouldn't ask someone to subscribe to your competitor's blog, but I don't actually see her as a competitor because you know, you know, there's plenty of room for both of us. Okay. Plus, all my videos are not going to be about food. Can I get my olive oil open? Oh, this video is going to be really long. I just thought about that. I wonder if anybody's going to watch it because it's so long. <laughs> I guess if you make three dishes at one time, the video is going to be long. Okay, I'm not going to measure this tablespoon. I'm just going to do it. Show you. Just kind of. Folding the oil, incorporating the olive oil into the minced leaves. I'm going to put it in the kale salad and then toss the salad to coat it. But the kale salad has not been put together. Uh, let the vinegar pour the dressing over the kale. You. Oh, I got you. I see what they're doing. Okay, kale salad. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't do part of my instructions above. It's asking me to put the kale in a large mixing bowl. Let me check on my curry real quick. It's almost time to put the kale that goes in the curry. It's almost time for it. It's got like a minute left. But let me get my large mixing bowl and 
I'm going to use just a large bowl I have with a lid because I know I'm going to be putting this away. I'm going to go ahead and get the salad assembled. Place the chopped kale into a large bowl. It wasn't chopped, it was thinly sliced, but okay. We're going to go with that. Into a large bowl. And I'm glad they told me that it was going to last for four days. One thing I like about using kale in salads instead of lettuce is that let, uh, kale doesn't wilt like lettuce does. So, what's this little thing popping up on my screen? I don't know. I hope we're still recording. I can't. There's some kind of little strange thing popping up on my screen. I don't know what it is. Okay, I think I got rid of it. Oh my goodness, what is happening? Something odd is happening. I don't know what's going on. Okay, I think it's done. That's my timer that tells me that it's time to put the chopped kale into the curry. It was just like a half, what is it? Let's see, half bunch. Okay, that's this kale right here. And I'm gonna open up my curry and dump it in there. Just throw it in there. Just throw it in there. And I'm supposed to add some soy sauce. Now here's where I'm gonna deviate again from the recipe. Instead of using soy sauce, I'm gonna use Bragg's liquid aminos, which is known to be a healthier option in place of soy sauce. Hold on, I'm gonna show it to you in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and, because this is a salt type of, you know, salty kind of a product, I don't wanna overdo it. So I'm going to, um, measure it and put the amount that that sweet potato sole told me to so there you go okay <laughs> but anyway bragg's liquid amino acids is a soy sauce alternative it is soy based don't give me the line about why it's better i just trust that it is because everybody says it is right <laughs> they want two tablespoons of First, let me cook, let me put my, um, I'll show you after I'm done stirring it in there. I'm stirring my kale down into this delicious curry, honey. Yes. Yes. What is happening to me? This looks very good. This looks very good. I'm turning up a little bit because once you take the lid off, of course, it lets a lot of the heat out and it stops cooking as vigorously as it had been. So now I've got the kale down in there. I'm gonna open up my liquid amino. And put two tablespoons in it like it told me to. No more, no less. Yay. And I'm gonna stir that around. And that looks good. Come on, Indian restaurant, listen. I don't know if I need them anymore because I'm over here making this curry and it is fire, honey. Well, I guess this has to cook down. Let me see what the instructions say. Oh, instructions are over here. It says season to, I'll cook for another five to 10 minutes. So because I like my kale to have a little bite to it. So I'm gonna split the difference and put the timer on for seven and a half minutes and let that, let that cook for that amount of time, just so I can see if I like the consistency of the kale at that point. I'm gonna put this extra kale away really quick since it's been sitting out. It's not going in any recipes today. So I'm going to put it away really quickly. Like I was saying, I love kale in place of lettuce and salads because it's gonna hold its crispness a lot longer, a lot better. I've never had kale actually get soggy on me in a salad, even if the salad was dressed and left in the refrigerator for days. It just doesn't do that. Because kale is a lot hardier of texture than lettuce. Okay, so, okay, the curry's going over there. I, I literally told you that I put my recipes up here and then I didn't do it. So I'm gonna do it right now. For my salad, you put the kale into the bowl set the okay vinaigrette's going for the dressing over the kale okay 
That's the dressing that I made by putting a bunch of stuff in a jar and vigorously shaking. So now I'm gonna pour it over my kale. People don't like kale. Kale has gotten a bad rap with some people, but I believe it's people that either had it prepared wrong or they just don't want to try new stuff. And that's their right not to, but you probably shouldn't say something nasty if you haven't given it a chance. Get my big spoon. Ooh, it vinegar strong. Pour the dressing over the kale. Oh, use my hands. Excuse me. Use your hands to massage it until the kale is tender. Okay, hands. <laughs> ah, massaging my kale. My kale is stressed out. It needs a massage. Okay, while I'm doing that, pour the pearl barley into the kale. Okay. And then, okay. Into the kale. Oh, yeah. Pearl barley has been sitting back here patiently waiting to be introduced into the salad. It is still a little warm, but it's cool enough. It's not going to, like I said, kale is hardy. It's not going to do anything to the kale. And, and the recipe didn't say anything about letting it cool. Oh, Lord, I'm doing something wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm only supposed to use a, <laughs> I'm only supposed to use a cup of this pearl barley. Oh, Lord. Well, I'm eating all of it, but I'm only supposed to use a cup of it. I get happy. Okay. Well, okay. So I've got a little bit more than I should. Cause I can't now I've already mixed the kale into it. But yeah, I, I cooked a, um, a cup of the uncooked barley, but it cause, of course creates like three cups worth of cooked barley. So anyway, it's not too much. I got a lot. I got some of it out before I get too happy. Sorry, pearl, pearl, pearl barley. Not to be confused with pearl barley, right? Okay, we'll put this back over here. Try to mess up my recipe. <laughs> so I've got the pearl barley in there, and transfer it to the kale salad. This carrot stuff. I guess maybe it's because maybe they have you put it, put this carrot top gremolata together separately because it's not going to be that much of it and they don't want it to get lost in the overall recipe. Now I'm going to massage it into it. Massa this looks good. Yes. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. And so once the roast vegetables are cooked, we can put them in here and they are cooked. They have sat here. They have gotten cool. So I'm going to put them into the salad and toss it well. Okay. So let's do that. That was kind of hard to see. Sorry. I don't have a cameraman. I do have a cameraman, actually. Curtis is a cameraman, but he is not here helping me with this. It's, oh, yeah. Listen, honey. This looks good. Mm, this looks really good. <laughs> I'm let you see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Girl, if you can feel this kale salad coming through, this is good. Oh, I need to turn my uh before I let y'all see any turn my stove down over here. I can't remember what. Oh yeah, two and a half minutes left. This looks really good. Praise God. I'm going to pour this into some meal prep containers and eat good for the week, huh? You listen. Okay. Let me show the people what this looks like. Okay. Here is our kale. What is it? Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me get the right name. The roast beet and carrot salad. Look at that. That looks good. I know it's kind of an odd view kind of hard to see but let me see if let me see if I can show it to you against the light without spilling it on my look at that hey hey yes I'm gonna be eating good this week go ahead and again a little clean up go ahead and put this I'm gonna have to get some pictures of it yeah, I've learned from my daughter. We're supposed to take pictures of all, the, everything we eat. You gotta take a picture, not just my daughter. 
everybody on the internet. Everywhere you eat, everywhere you go, we're gonna take pictures. So we'll do that after I get done with this video, which needs to wrap up here soon because I know this is a long one. Really long. So I appreciate you staying with me. This looks really good. Let me show it to you. I think we're done. The salad is gone. That's the roast beet and carrot salad. We're done with that. The lentil sweet potato. I'm going to test one of my sweet potatoes to make sure that it is done. The brown rice has been done. A lot of these recipes get poured over brown rice. So, almost all the liquids are cooked out of the chili. Let me get my pot holder on. I know this stuff is hot. Oh, this? Listen! Honey, yes! This is good. This is going to be fire. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> this is going to be good. Um, I'm going to bring the laptop over here again so y'all can see it. Look at that! No! I will be eating good this week, honey, and not feeling guilty in the drive throughs this has a couple more minutes to cook. Oh, no, it doesn't. That's the timer, honey. That's it. Cancel. But that is my curry. So they are ready to go. This food is ready to go into my... Ah, I'm so excited. This is ready to go into my little meal prep dishes. I'm going to show you what I'm putting in, but I'm going to be... The video is not going to include me putting it into the dishes. So here are my little meal prep dishes that I use. I will put the salad. I don't know how I'm going to do it because I don't want to heat up the salad with the, I'll probably put it in something that I can lift out of, lift it out before I put it in the microwave. But anyway, these are my meal prep dishes. Thank you so much for joining me. I know this is a long video, but I wanted to accomplish several things at once. And so I did that. Again, we made sweet potato and tofu curry. We made roast beet and carrot salad. And we made lentil sweet potato chili all at once to meal prep for the entire week. I'm glad I didn't do the other recipes because this is more than enough food for me for two meals a day for at least four days. So I'm really excited. Again, shout out to Sweet Potato Soul. Thank you for these recipes, my friend. Keep them coming. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Please like this video, share this video, leave me a comment. If you're going to try any of these recipes, or even if you just like the way they look at, in my bowls, let me know. Also, um, let's see, like, share, comment, subscribe, 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 so you know when new content comes out. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.